Disney's Flix mapping fault lines after over a month since the official count got over, Peru's new president has been finally sworn in. Pedro Castillo, the left-wing candidate from the Free Peru Party, is now the president of the country. And to talk more about this, to talk about what this victory means, we are joined by Prabir Pakarasta. So Prabir, can you tell us about this? What does this victory signify, especially considering that uh, Castillo has announced that he will be essentially, you know, he will be bringing in a new constitution and essentially changing the very nature of uh, the structures of governance in the country. You know, if we look at what Peru is today, and that really goes back to oh, what we will see is the first Fujimori uh, presidency. But even before that, you had military coups, you had dictatorial regimes over there. And Peru became a part of the uh, what is called the Operation Condor, which brought right-wing regimes in Latin America together against different shades of the left. So that was the history on which Fujimori arose in the 90s. And of course, uh, the death squads, large-scale sterilization of women, all of this was carried, sterilization of indigenous women were carried out by Fujimori. So there is that whole bloody history which is there. In fact, Argentinian group in Lima were picked up in Operation Condor, which was like I said, death squads funded, run by the CIA, which were operating in Latin America at the time, who came to Lima, picked up three Argentinians from there and brought them back. So to Argentina. So all of this history is there with Peru. So when you talk about what is happening now, we cannot really uh, do that without referring back to that period. Keiko Fujibori represents that for those forces which at that time ruled over Latin parts of Latin America, large parts of Latin America, and which is currently changing. And uh, she represents it because of her father's legacy and the parties and part, party and party she represents and what her personal political philosophy uh, is. Of course, as we know, Fujimori was also convicted of corruption. In fact, his political stock fell drastically after he was caught in major corruption scandals where the money was siphoned off from the state coffers. So that was really what brought him down. But if we take the larger picture of Latin America, what we see in Peru is, of course, a change of two kinds. One is a kind of left forces we are seeing. And this is also based on the indigenous people, mixed population. If we look at Pedro Castillo, he is a mixed part uh, indigenous, part Spanish, mixed, pop, mixed origin, mestizo. And uh, he, of course, has harked back to the uh, indigenous people of Peru. If you also look at where Peru is, you will see it's on the Andes. And this is where a large part of the indigenous population uh, still is. So you have Bolivia, you have Peru, you have also, what is it? You have also Ecuador, uh, you have also parts of Chile. So all of this is where a lot of the indigenous population are concentrated. And they are like in Bolivia. Evo Morales represented that. So you also have with Castillo that kind of political forces coming into play, not just also the left ideology, but also this. So I think that is very much what we are seeing. And what is important here is that the one of the first announcement Castillo has made is the possibility of changing the constitution. And that is the constitution that Fujimori had brought in. Uh, so that constitution, if it is changed, then a lot of the dictatorial powers that have been gathered by the president and the state would perhaps be then open to change and review. And I think that would be very interesting and there's a very important thing that would happen in Peru if that comes through. We have also seen a similar process in Chile, which has started. But I think all of this is not simply a victory of a candidate over another candidate, but it is really a much bigger victory of, uh, and it could, it could represent a seismic shift in Latin America. So this, I should not, I do not think this is just simply a small change in one 
relatively not very big country, but it is really a very significant part of the change which is going on in this region. Can you tell us more about the sort of policy changes that uh, Castillo is, uh, you know, thinking of bringing in? Uh, when we look at the previous constitution, the sort of um, privatization that was carried out during Fujimori's time, the sort of neoliberal provisions that was brought in. So that sort of changes that Castillo is is what I, we think he would be planning to bring and what that would mean for the indigenous populations, for the people of deep Peru, as they say, you know, who have supported him and brought him uh, into power. You know, I don't think an immediate change of the policies is going to be so easy because he has a support base in the parliament, which is not very big. So there are various other uh, parties over there and all of them put together. What is the what is the weight of the left as opposed to the weight of the center and the right? That's something that we'll have to see. So it's not very clear that a sharp shift in policies is immediately possible. What you're talking about is trying to change the deeper structures of the state, which were changed under Fujimori and even before. And the fact that you have neoliberal provisions in various parts of the constitution. So instead of talking about only change of policies, if the process of constitutional change is initiated, I think we are going to get a much, uh, a very different kind of forces than released. And most probably, if it can be done, it will have to be done through a referendum and then electing a constitutional body, which will then frame the new constitution, the path that Chile has taken, in which it has really is now in the process of overhauling Pinochet's constitution. So it's a similar process over here that we are talking about. And I think if, there, if he's able to do that, so that would be very, very significant for the future. The question is, the, at the moment, uh, the body, the Congress, that is not very conducive to really sharp changes of policy. So given that, we'll have to see who the finance minister is. He's chosen a fairly strong left-wing prime minister and from the same party, Party Libre or Freedom, Free Peru Party. So that is, that is there. But who is the finance minister is something that we'll have to see. And once we see that, we'll also know what's the direction he wants to take. But as I said, the equation in the Congress which is necessary for changing policies is not that clear as of now. And we'll have to see how it pans out. So maybe for the time being, he might be forced to take a more reformist position instead of a more radical position with respect to immediate policies. But I think the fact that he's put the first thing on the agenda as the uh, constitution uh, the change of constitution, I think that indicates the longer term uh, plans that he has. Let's also put it, the party is new, this party in, uh, that has won the election. Uh, it's also a relatively uh, difficult situation because of the correlation of forces that is there. His victory was razor thin, so we'll have to see what is the level of support that people uh, you know, are, will give him for the policies he's, proper, he's going to propagate or is propagating. So I think it's a difficult situation for him, not that simple situation for him to negotiate, but I think the right uh, focus is what he has chosen, the uh, issue of constitutional change, change of constitution. And finally, Prabhu, can you tell us what Castillo's victory means for the continent, for, the, for, the Latin, for Latin America as a whole? I think that's a very interesting uh, question because if you see the changes that have now taken place, you had Argentina earlier, you had Chile, the referendum on the question of having a constitution, you have now uh, Peru, you have Bolivia where Evo Morales party again won victory. So you've already had four left victories in the region. Ecuador, yes, the left did not succeed partly because of the divisions on the left itself. Brazil, Bolsonaro is not in a good position. Uh, he's handled COVID very badly. There's rising discontent about him. There are charges of corruption of his and his family. So Brazil seems to be some something which will probably go to the left 
in the next year's election, particularly if Lula is able to stand for elections and the Americans are not able to stop him. So I think that would be a huge seismic shift in Latin America if Brazil goes to the left. So I think Latin America, again, we are seeing a rise of left. What was talked about 20, 25 years back, the left is rising in Latin America. It, there was a reverse. There was a reversal, clearly, that you got a set of right-wing forces coming in over here, coups that were manufactured, preventing Lula from running, a coup against Evo Morales, all that has happened. But I think what we are seeing is probably a uh, be beating back the forces of the right. And this, if we see what's happening in Latin America, uh, Peru is going to be an important mm -hmm. step, though it doesn't have the weight Brazil, mm -hmm. Argentina has. But nevertheless, Peru is important. And being another country which is going this way, I think does indicate a larger shift to the left, left again in Latin America and a weakening of the American-backed regimes that had taken power. And I think both of these are going to be important. I think uh, Trump uh, has helped in that uh, context, as did George Bush, because they all focused, uh, George Bush focused on West Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump focused on everybody. So he was really, <laughs> his allies, everybody was, uh, he was basically uh, damning, though he was a great friend of Bolsonaro. And I don't think yeah. Bolsonaro has been particularly helped by that. But if you look at all of this, the U.S. policies have not been particularly successful in Latin America. And uh, the Trumpian aggressive policy of America first backing various right-wing forces, I think is rebounding on the United States in terms of a lack of legitimacy. Mm -hmm. So I think what we are seeing in Latin America is a larger resurgence of left. And if that happens in Brazil again, I think we are going to see a return to a kind of uh, left, uh, I won't call it the red tide, but definitely a pink tide rising in Latin America again. We already have Mexico also taking a certain path. Even if it is not a clear shift for left politics, it's a clear shift away from U.S. hegemony. And I think that's, that's important for the continent. Right. So thank you, Prabhi, for joining us for this discussion. And that's all the time we have. Keep watching News Clip.